The Star Wars universe is constantly expanding. But how the heck are you going to keep tabs on it without a holocron? And where in the rim can I score the juiciest news and rumors? Ah, you seek State of the Empire, Consequence of Sound's Star Wars Speculation Podcast, where we look for news in Alderaan places. We dig into the Sarlacc pit of the internet for the hottest intel in the galaxy far, far away. Make Indiana Jones inquiries and keep watch for the latest on Willow. Find us on consequenceofsound.net or wherever you procure fine podcasts. It's the show you're looking for. Consequence Podcast Network. Welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's an audio interview series presented by WFPK Independent Louisville at WFPK.org. Consequence of Sound and the Consequence Podcast Network. Uh, Wherever you're listening from today, take a second hit that subscribe button we do multiple interviews every single week and if you like the series we'd love for you to keep up with it whether you're checking it out on youtube the podcast version or now on spotify i'm kyle meredith today my guest david crosby the legendary songwriter is back with a new album called here if you listen this time it's a group effort multiple singers multiple writers we're going to get the uh, story behind all of that as well as how we use some demos from the 60s and 70s within these new songs. Then, speaking of back in time, we'll talk about the uh, Bird's Notorious Bird Brothers album, as well as Sweetheart of the Rodeo, both that turned 50 years old this year, and if Mr. Crosby would be up for a CSNY reunion for its 50th anniversary next year. It's Kyle Meredith with David Crosby. Hi, Kyle. It's David Crosby. Here, if you listen, is another beautiful record, and I feel like you're going to be told that every year, as you have been for the last five years. Here's another <laughs> beautiful album. It is. But um, l- let's get into this, because this one is a bit different. This album has uh, some of the other band members taking the lead vocals this time around, right? Yeah. What happened is this. Man. I started doing the Lighthouse record. I, I asked Michael to, to produce it, right? That was I, I knew I wanted to make a record. I had some songs. And uh, I, I wanted Michael to produce. Michael introduced me to Becca and Michelle. I asked them to sing on the record because they're a stunner singer. What happened is that in between the chemistry of Michael and I writing, and I mean, there was a lot of chemistry. We wrote three of the best songs on that album three consecutive days. Uh, in between all of the, the incredible fun of working with Michael and working with Becca and working with Michelle, I realized the next time we did it, I wanted to do it differently. And so when we started this record, I said, guys, I want it to be a group record. I don't want to make it be a solo record. That last one was a solo record with you guys guesting on it and Michael producing. This is a group record. I want you to write it with me. I want you to sing it with me. And that's what we did. We went into Michael's studio in Brooklyn when we only had two songs. We had Janet, that song of Michelle, mm-hmm. and we had Your Own Ride, the song that I wrote with Bill Lawrence uh, that's like written to my son Django. And that's it. We didn't have anything else. We wrote the entire rest of the record in the next eight days, and then we recorded it in the rest of that month. In one month, man, we walked in and wrote and recorded the whole record together, the four of us. And that's what it sounds like. And I'm really happy about it. Yeah, I mean, there, there's so much variety all over this. I mean, you mentioned you mentioned Janet right from the beginning there, and you know, it's 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 sort of uh, got that funky thing going through it, you know, and which is. <laughs> It is. It's it's very fun. Well, it's because those people are that good, man. It wouldn't it wouldn't have worked if I hadn't picked great people, and I did. I'll give myself credit for that. I did pick stunner people, but the the credit goes to them, and they are amazingly talented, and they really stepped up. Within that, I mean, this project could as it goes forward, if it goes forward, I'm guessing, I mean, this could turn into something else entirely from where you started, as it already has, right? Yeah, I think uh, I think it's the group. You know, I, we all have solo careers, and we all work in several different combinations. Michael, notably, you know, with Snarky Puppy and with Bocante and the other people that he produces. We all have different stuff, but, I, you know, I think it comes down to we all recognize the chemistry when it happens. None of us can really deny that there is there is a definite real chemistry that happens when the four of us try working on some music together. So that's good. We look at it and, and we can't deny it. It's pretty undeniable force. We'll see how it goes, you know. But I'm still alive and I can still sing, so yeah. it's entirely possible we'll keep it going. 
you know, a lot of artists, it, it's hard for them to do something, um, to always be creative if they don't have push uh, something to push up against. And I, I wondered, like, do you find a particular challenge, you know, a good challenge w- with these artists that allow you to, to have something to push up against? I wouldn't say it's challenging. It's more like encouraging. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, there's two ways to go about this thing. One is challenge, and, and it's competitive effort. And that's what CS, CSNY always was. Uh, and it, it definitely produces some really good work. I mean, CSNY is good work, but it's competitive effort. Co- cooperative effort is a different ball game, and that's Lighthouse. It's, it's definitely a cooperative effort. There's no, no way around it. We like working with each other. We like helping each other, and, and we do trust each other. A few other interesting points on this record is, of course, You've got one called 1974, one called 1967, and you, of course, cover Woodstock a- at the end. Uh, and I'll hit with those those number songs first. Are are those actually, do I hear you from those years, too? Are we listening to demo parts of that, or is that just the way it yeah, was kind of recorded? Yes. Yeah. No, that's exactly it. Those are two demos from those two years. One of them is fantastic because you actually hear me writing the song. You can hear me finding the melody to the song and finding the song. And we took both of them and I said, Michael, you know, we can either try to work with these or we can take them as the sketch and make a brand new record from scratch of each of them. And he said, man, I'd love to play Time Machine and try to take them from then to now and have it all work. I I said, I know it's against the rules, and I know it shouldn't work, but your voice then and your voice now are really, really still similar, and it sounds really good. So let's just try it. Let's try going from the original demo right to a brand-new record from right now and see if we can pull it off as a time machine. And I think we did. No, it's incredible. It sounds so great. It really does. Um, Thanks, man. Yeah, kind of. Now, when you write, do, do you ever feel like your past gets in the way of your writing? No, the only thing that gets in the way of my writing is laziness. <laughs> yeah, for me, yeah, I'm rat on my butt. You know, I, I I'd wondered with so much, you know, history and, and legacy, with so many songs in your uh, in your own catalog, you know, if that would at some point be like, I don't know. I mean, you know, where do the melodies come from that you haven't tried so far? Because you you somehow keep finding them. I so far it's still a, a joy, man. It's still great fun to do, and so far. Music is still coming to me, and words are still coming to me. When they stop, they'll stop. But right now, they're still there, so I'm still writing songs, and that's a joy to me. And, you know, sometimes, you know, the way we, you know, write changes through the years. When talking about politically natured songs, political natured songs, do you find that that's changed at all in the way you would write uh, about whatever's happening out there? Not much. That, that song that I wrote in the last one, Capital. That's a pretty good political song. It's a, a character assassination of Congress, and they certainly deserve it. <laughs> I'm looking to write a political song now of of the Ohio and um, we shall overcome kind of sort. I, I, we need another great sort of get out in the street fight song. I've been asking I, on the net. I've been telling other writers. I've been saying, hey, if you're a songwriter out there, we need this song. And I'm working on it, but I haven't got it yet. So if you do, let us know. Because we do need it in Ohio. We need our own Ohio. And in the meantime, I've been singing Ohio as much as I can. I've talked about this a lot before in other interviews, you know, the, the, the unfortunate nature that those songs still make so much sense to this day. Because I would love to listen to that one just because it's a cool groove and it's got a great, you know, backbeat to it and all that stuff. But, but those words, every single one of them, still make 100% sense. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a strong thing. So I'm, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm singing it every night. What about, if you don't mind asking about a, a couple uh, of your back catalog records right now, and I only bring them up because they're, they're do, you know, you mentioned Time Machine. They are celebrating the big round years right now. Uh, I, was, um, I was on the phone with Roger just a few days ago, and he says hi, by the way. He told me to tell you hi. Yeah, good. I like him. Yeah. I mean, of course, he's been out there with Sweethearts uh, touring that 50th, and I, I was thinking, you know, the Notorious Bear Brothers album also turns 50, and it, it do you feel like that one's not getting the attention it deserves? Because I love that record, and it, I feel like it's probably being overshadowed right now by Sweetheart. Well, no, I don't think it really is that big a deal. I think Sweetheart is getting the attention it's getting because it was the first country rock record that I know of anyway. It was the, sort of the marker where country rock started is that record to me. And I think when they tossed me out of the group, the, the direction they went was that, that thing, and it was a completely different direction than the birds had gone before. 
and it was totally valid, and they did a great job, and they're doing a great job with it on the concert. I've had friends go to the concert and tell me it's really good. Yeah, yeah the way they're doing the history and everything that kind of leads up to it. And, and, and I, I'll make that clear. I'm not knocking Sweetheart, of course. I, I do love that album. It's just when I look at that Notorious, I'm like, oh, man, I would love to see that celebration. Like, let me pick out Draft Morning because that is so lovely and like just the sound of it and then you get to the lyrics and it's so powerful when the war comes in i mean the juxtaposition of that song uh is is sort of unlike just about any other song you know thanks man i mean it, it, I, I would say what's obvious right now you know obviously a draft morning kind of spells it all out there but 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 how did you come up with the concept of uh, or anybody whoever came up with the concept of, of of those movements within that song i don't know i have no idea you know i know i was going to get drafted and uh at- was looking me right in the face, and uh, so it was a natural thing to write about. The first CSN record will turn 50 next year. Do you have any desire to celebrate that in, in any way, I'll point out? No, not really. I, I You know, I would probably, if, if Neil wants to get together and do C, a CSN Y thing, 50th, I would probably do that. I don't think a CSN thing would be such a good idea. Uh, I think a CSN Y might be doable. But the truth is, man, I, I really... I don't have enough time to stand around kind of waiting. I, I'm working as hard as I can all the time right now because uh, I, 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 whatever time I've got, I want to put it into making music. And so I'm, I'm not waiting for anybody. I'm working all the time, constantly. Uh, which is really evident. I mean, I, I, I hear you've already started working on the next record. Is, is that true? Yes, we're already writing it. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> this is the best. I swear this is the best thing. And then I should also I should also bring up your other venture because uh, I don't know if it's actually started yet or maybe it's a desire but Mighty Cross this is a this is the yeah yeah I'm gonna do it if I can get it I I figure that you know there, there's gonna emerge from the the fray out there there's gonna emerge uh, several national and international pot companies and I want to you know put my name and face on, on one of them and have my own brand I, I think it's a good thing and uh, so I'm trying to get it to happen. We're looking to, to make a deal with one of the companies. There's a number of them that we're talking to. So there's no timeline on that, though, when we could uh, maybe see that, uh, or a desired timeline? No, not really. Uh, we want to, The desire is to do a really good, solid deal with a, a really good, solid company, and that takes time. Well, that'll be, uh, I'll be looking forward to that. And one of these days, I don't know, what do you think about it? Is there going to be a, a David Crosby movie ever? Because it seems like everybody else is getting their movie right now, and I feel like you got a story to tell. Well, yeah, I... I Cameron Crowe, you know who he is? Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's doing a documentary on it. Yeah, no, we've been working on it for a while. It's just about finished. That's very exciting. That answer, See, now now you've made all of my dreams come true, David. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> really not all. All right, really you, you've you made all. three dreams come true today. I've got a few more. You're tr- it's true. Thank you so much for the t- talk today and taking the time to talk about this. Again, congratulations on Here If You Listen. I'll probably tell you the same thing next year when we get another record or whenever that comes out. No doubt that will be great as well. Thank you, man. I appreciate the help. All right. We'll see you around. Take care. All right, man. Thank you. And a big thank you to Mr. David Crosby. Again, the new record, Here If You Listen. If you haven't already, please subscribe. There is a subscribe button somewhere around where you're listening from right now. Go ahead and hit it. Whether you're checking us out on YouTube, uh, the podcast version, or now on Spotify, you can follow on there as well. After that, head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show every Monday through Thursday from noon to 3 Eastern, where you can also find some bonus episodes of this series. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network.